Good morning, party people. I am in Kalamazoo, Michigan, in the wonderful world of Handy Dan's Volvo Projects. Uh, Dan has one of his V70s needed a steering rack. I thought, man, I could swing through there and help him with that hostage situation. You know, I think rust is the devil's gift to us all mechanics. Man, it's crazy. Uh, the pivot nut on the lines that screw in the back of the steering rack are seized with rust. So uh, that's turned into a challenge. Turns a three, four hour job into a project that hopefully will end soon. And when I get this done, dash out to Chicago, hopefully uh, by two or three. Uh, man, it'd be nice if it happens within uh, two hours, but we'll see. If not, man, I might have to dash out to Chicago next week. Crazy. Anyway, uh, today's video is part two of the live stream from the other night. Now, don't forget, you can hit your settings on YouTube and go to playback speed. And man, speed that up. Uh, if you pay attention, you can still understand everything that's being said. But you can speed up the sound so that it doesn't take so long to watch a video that's just mainly just dialogue. Some people like to listen to dialogue in slow-mo. I like to listen to dialogue in fast speed. So the speed I'm talking now is a speed you can speed it up to maybe 1.5. Other than that, you can listen to it at normal speed and sit through it for 40 minutes or so. But uh, here, the video sound cut off at like 33 minutes. And I went on for another 13 minutes not knowing I didn't have sound. So I'm going to answer some questions I found in the chat. Hopefully that will complete the video to a, a decent way. Uh, completing answering questions on the live feed. And hope you guys enjoy it. Thanks for watching. All right. I'm back. I got indication that my mic is working, so I guess that's something I need to keep an eye on. You're first again, Cameron. Woo, woo. <laughs> Man, yeah, I got sound. I, I guess it's just a glitch in the YouTube system because the computer, when I went to the settings in the computer, I still had sound on the computer. So I apologize for that. What's happening, Nick? Hey, John. Yeah, so I forgot what I was talking about. I had to go back. Let me go back, see if that uh, had some live chat comments on there. I probably had to go to that video on the live chat comments. Help for review. Nope. Man, I don't see any comments at all. wonder why all the comments are not in my screen. I don't know. Did I disappear from you guys for a little bit? Hey, I appreciate everybody coming on. Yeah, I got sound over here. He's back. Hello, everyone. You were talking about the T T5Rs. Yeah, I, actually, I was talking about car values, I guess. And, uh, of course, I'm not that stuck on mileage as I am on condition. Because, like, my yellow uh, wagon I bought, man, that thing is beat. It was tired. And... You know, I'm bringing it back to life, you know, so I got to put a lot in it to make that thing nice again. Panther, on the other hand, it's dirty with all the junk I'm driving around in it, but that car drives amazing, man. The only thing I need to do to that thing kind of immediately is change the spark plugs. I got spark plugs in, I ordered, and they're here, and I also need to change the CV axles. Towing cars around with Panther has just destroyed the CV axle. Man, those things are like crunching. It sounds like I'm crunching bearings in those things when I make just minor turns now. So probably going to do that tomorrow. But fake uncle of Byron's has a two-year-old Toyota. I want to say it's a Camry. He traded that thing in about a week ago, and they gave him 4000 more than he paid for it two years ago. That's just insane. So, hey, yeah, used car prices are, are kind of crazy. Insurance companies don't like to think so, but, hey, I'm telling you guys, if you get in an accident, 
Avoid letting your insurance company total your vehicle at all costs, man. They are just going crazy with trying to total cars. Now, a few months ago, they tried to total one of mine. A lot of you guys know, and uh, they wanted to give me $3,300. <laughs> After about a month of ignoring them and telling them to learn their jobs and wake up to reality, they ended up giving me a check for like 11 Gs. $3,200 to 11000 and they didn't total the vehicle. They told me if I needed more money, let them know they would give me more money. So, um, yeah, I mean, try not to let them total your car. Now, there was a guy locally here. He had an S70. Somebody backed into the door at the grocery store. Had a door dent. They estimated the repairs for the door to be like $1,600. They estimated the car to be worth $2,800, which was kind of low for how clean the car was. I told them, do what you want, man. I got a door for it. So I had stripped the car down, had the parts, still got parts in storage. I replaced the door. He went on his way. Well, through his insurance company in the BMV here in Ohio, he had to get a salvage title and to register the car with a salvage title. So they asked him where he got the parts to fix the car. He said, you know, this Robert guy, they said, well, we need the letter from him stating where he got the parts and then we'll issue you a registration. So I notarized a letter, gave it to him. Well, I got it notarized, gave it to him with the VIN number of the car that the door came from and the cars in the system is being salvaged because I sent the car to the salvage yard. Still gave him a hard time. Wouldn't give him a registration. Said we need to know where he got the car from. It's like the car is salvaged. You know it. It's in your records of being salvaged. Why y'all harassing this guy? So I had to write another letter for him stating who I purchased the car from before they would give them a registration. It's just junk, you know. I don't know why they're giving people a hard time about it. But I don't like having a car with a salvage title. Something as simple as a door, salvage a car. I uh, recently purchased a car. Did $18,000 worth of work to the car. Didn't know it had a salvage title. The person decided they wanted to sell it. They contacted me, gave me what I thought was a deal on the car. Didn't have the title handy. I didn't run a VIN check on it. A couple weeks later, sent me a salvage title. I was pissed off. I couldn't believe the car was a salvage title. And actually, it was the best driving 850 I've ever driven. We did so much work on it. The suspension, the bushings, the, everything except the coolant system was refreshed and a couple things inside. So anyway, I committed to sell the car to another guy. And when I found out the title was salvaged, I contacted the guy immediately. I said, look, man, I am so sorry. I did not know that this vehicle had a salvage title. So if you want to back out of the deal, I'll give you your money back today. You can back out of the deal. No, no, no. I want to keep it. I want to keep it. So, uh, all right. Can you guys still hear me? Just want to make sure y'all can still hear me. Somebody give me a, yes, we can still hear you. Check. Do, do, do. All right, cool. So I told the guy, hey, I give you money back. He's like, no, 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 no. I don't want my money back, man. I want to keep this car. How'd you miss it with salvage title? Well, you bought it from me the same way you missed it with a salvage title. I didn't have the title, and you didn't run a car fact. So if you want your money back, I give your money back. No, 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 I'm gonna keep it. Now I'm gonna have to report the car stolen because the guy was not paying me the money for the car. It's it's crazy. So anyway, I hope he snaps out of it and gives me my money, the rest of the money he owed me for the car. I was nice enough to let him have a car because he paid more than half of it and was told me he was gonna pay me off in a month. My wife passes away. He takes advantage of that. Now, I ain't got no money since. You know, it's ridiculous. I don't know why people, they want to be 
all nice and fine till they get what they want. Now you got to chase them down for your money. Well, I'll get it. You know, if I got a report of stolen, I'll get it. You know, anyway, man, yeah. Uh, if a car is in great condition, yeah, they're worth a lot. My buddy Dan, he put, man, probably $12,000 worth of parts into a Saffron wagon. And Dan, I'm learning a little bit about Dan. Dan likes to build them and let them go and build on the next one. So Dan sold his Saffron all-wheel drive car for a decent price, you know. And, uh, man, I mean, the, what the guy paid for it was probably what he got in it, you know, close in the, the parts. But, man, these are very nice cars. They can last a long time if you service them. They ride incredible. You know, I sometimes ride in people's newer cars, going to the store, going here, going there, going to eat, whatever. Man, there is, there's not a lot of cars that drive better than these out there, you know. So I'm I'm sold on these P80 Volvo 850s, you know, and I'm still learning things about them. I'm still making sure that they're running good. And, hey, I'm, I'm glad to be able to help a lot of you guys do the same, so. Let me see here. Catch up with a couple. We'll see if we got any questions. I have answered stuff like that. All right. Still got sound. I'm back. Hello, everyone. You're talking about this T5R. Yep. Do you have cars for sale? Carla, I do not have a car for sale. I wish I did. I don't. I just looked at another one up the street from me, a white 850 in a I think it's a 96, man, car runs great. Got a ton of stuff wrong with it. I think it's got like three, $4,000 worth of stuff wrong with it, but it runs great. I would like to buy the car for a donor car. The parts that make it right would probably cost somewhere in the neighborhood of, you know, six, 700 bucks. I got to check my budget, my account, see if I got that kind of money I can spare. The guy wants $1,000 for the car. My plan is by this winter, have all these extra cars around here sold out or whatever. And then maybe three or four cars a year, rebuild them and donate them to needy veterans. And then have cars that I really put a lot into restoring and have some nice cars for sale, maybe three, four a year, you know, but right now I don't. And because of all the traveling I've been doing this year and all this other stuff going on, I'm not in the really in the position to get any and get them ready for somebody to purchase or drive or something, you know, so. If you got a car that I could fix for you, man, I'd love to try to get that done for you. And I will not have some of the travel expenses that I usually had because I mentioned this before. I'm probably in the position where if I find someone in a town that is willing to host me and the accommodations are comfortable, I won't have to stay in a hotel. So that'll lower the cost dramatically, allowing me to do more of a helper tour instead of a, a repair cost plus thing. It gets expensive with this cost plus stuff, man. I was out there in the Bay Area paying over $4,000 a month just in hotel fee. I mean, people were still getting decent deals on getting their vehicles fixed, but it could be a lot better if I wasn't paying those expensive hotel bills. All right, so used car prices unheard of. When has a used car been? I agree. Well, never happened like this before. Recently lost my V70R to line dealership. Lied about issues. Motor blew three weeks after buying it. Man, you know, it, it's hard to talk yourself into putting the engine in a car that's that old, but man, if if I blew the engine in Panther, I'm sorry. I'm going a, I'm to a find me an engine to put in there. If I got to find one in a Bobcat, you know, I'm going to get it done. Heroes, 
you have more problems than I have. <laughs> Which Volvo would you like to get after the 850? Another 850. <laughs> I, I really don't have any desire to uh, move into anything newer. Man, the 850 has features that people don't even have on their new cars. Now, uh, Elizabeth is in one of my T5R sedans. I call it mine. She can have it, whatever. I mean, she needs a car to drive. She wrecked Little Red, and she's not in the position to buy nothing nice right now. So an 850 is nice, and I don't need the car right now. When I get to where I need the car, I'll get her something to replace it, get my T5R back. You know, I don't think she needs to be in a T5R. What I would like to get for her is either a P2, somewhere around 2006, 2007, or one of those S80s, man. Those late 2000 S80s are freaking incredible cars. I've driven some. Man, that T6 is a monster. That V8 is incredible. They got features that people still don't use today in cars. Those cars were ahead of their time. So if I got something that wasn't a P80 right now, I would like to get like a S80 T6 or a V8 somewhere around 2008. Wouldn't mind getting the XC90 maybe for her around that vintage year and start learning how to fix that newer stuff in a way that I can share with other people that have those vehicles, you know. So some of the stuff is so complex, you need special tools. And hopefully the guys that have these vehicles and need these special tools will actually join a Volvo club in their area and you guys could do group buys on those tools nobody wants to go buy a 700 dollars tool to do a three thousand dollar job but it's not a bad thing you know if you had to buy the tools to do the job and the dealer would charge forty two hundred dollars for the job and all the tools and parts cost you a thousand dollars and then you spend a week doing it you still come ahead by three g's you know, but if you got a Volvo community in your area and you guys could do group buys on these certain tools and then whoever has the ability to hold on to the tools and shuffle them in and out and stuff like that, that'd be great. And whenever somebody needed the tool, they need to put up a deposit. You know, if the tool 600 bucks, put up a $600 deposit, use the tool get your $600 back, you know. Uh, we do know that some people, unfortunately, they're selfish and they won't return tools in a timely manner or they'll just disappear and quit answering your calls and, you know, kind of like I got going on with this car I need to find out what's going on with, you know. I don't care if something's not right. You, you still made an agreement to pay, pay, you know. Anyway, uh, let's see what else we got going on. Yeah, so I, that's probably uh, where I might go next with getting something, putting my hands on something newer and trying to work through issues that it has. Uh, man, yeah, man. I like to go to Canada, too. Unfortunately, fall is rapidly approaching. The sun is going down. I used to go for my walks at 530 in the morning. Now it's not even daylight at 6.30, you know, so it's going to get cold too quick, so I'm probably not going to make a, a, I say, a group, uh, community Canada trip until probably, mm, probably late spring, you know, May-ish, uh, go up Canada, spend some time up there, I got passport, all that kind of stuff, and just hang out and meet a lot of guys up there and, and help them fix whatever they need help with, you know. So, what else going on here? Do, 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 do. Oh, man. I got a bunch of comments here. Fix the roof on a C70. I have not 
done a C70 roof. However, when I go to Albuquerque, I'm going to ask the Volvo mechanic there, Thomas, to teach me how to do that so that I can uh, help you guys fix that kind of stuff. Gene, what kind of question you got? Nice ride, glass headlights. Yeah, I think those 04 XC70s are great vehicles. With a problem with the rear lights flickering. Mm. Man, I don't know. I would definitely hook up Vita to it, see if it has any information in there about it, and I can ask a couple mechanics about that. Get back with you. Send me a text or something like that. And I could maybe help you troubleshoot that XC90 with those taillight issues. Uh, broke. I have brake vibration. Brake vibrations is is more than likely front rotors warped. Uh, if you get cheap rotors, they can warp really quick. So it it you can have rotors that are three weeks old and they're warped and. That's what you got to deal with until you buy, like, Volvo quality rotors. You know, I normally get Brembro uh, or Zimmerman. Zimmerman is, you know, kind of hit or miss. I need to replace them on Panther right now. I've had the ones that I believe that's on Panther turned, so I don't know if they could be turned again, but I got another set or two here. One set's brand new. The other set has been turned, and uh, I need to replace those rotors so I can have that smooth stop, man. Front rotors looking good and being good is two different things. I don't know how you could look at them and see if they're good. I could look at them and see if the brake pad's wearing a clear spot on them, but I can't see if they're warped. Yeah, you have to put that thing on a machine to see. But yeah, warp rotors, man, as Gene said. Yeah, you probably got a CEM problem uh, looking at your back windows, don't respond, stuff like that. You probably got a CEM problem with that Volvo or something not plugged in properly. You planning on selling me that banana wagon? Man, I, I just assume that you are waiting for me to die to get that car because that's when it's going to be sold over my dead body. <laughs> FCP or IPD sponsorship, if it was offered. Man, you know, I, I I don't have any favorites, you know. I just don't like people stealing from me. I used to steal a lot when I was young. I don't do it no more. When I got mature, I figured that wasn't a good thing to do, you know. So I've had in the past uh, kind of what I consider weak offers from, from both. But lemonade. Uh, is being sponsored in a big way by IPD. I need to go in there and see if I have some more videos that I've already made uh, and been putting the parts on it that I received from IPD so that I can unlock those videos. That's just been, I've been overwhelmed, haven't double checked. I did release some of them and I mentioned in a couple of those videos that IPD helped me in a big way with uh, the parts that I'm putting on that. So my plan with Lemonade is to get that thing back here, uh, Cincinnati, and strip it down and take it to a paint shop, manual swap it, and put a mild tune on it. And then maybe next year or the year after next, go to every Volvo car show and meet that I could afford to go to. I have the car in Las Vegas right now with my friend Willie Gilly, and I was thinking about driving it back here, and I just bought a plane ticket nonstop from Cincinnati, Ohio to Las Vegas, Nevada, $64. I can't drive to Louisville, Kentucky and back for $64. If I left here, I don't know if $64 would get me to St. Louis, like a third of the way. That's like 400 miles. Uh, Las Vegas is 2,400 miles away. So 
I said all that to say this, man, when I get that car put together and I want to go out there and tour and go to all the shows and meets that you guys go to, I'm going to have to have some money to get around, you know? Mm. So it may be working on the way, you know, fix some things for people in the town that the next meet will be in after the meet break, you know? So that's, that's what I want to do. Travel around with lemonade and, uh, let people say, man, uh, year before last, or maybe last year, 2021 is the first year that I ever seen a yellow wagon in person. There was two or three of them at the Carlisle show in Pennsylvania. Other than that, man, it's, they're, they're hard to, they're hard to see unless somebody's got one in your town. You know, I sure had never rode one before I, I bought lemonade because people like me, but they don't like me enough to ride me around in their yellow wagon. <laughs> so let's see here. Mm -mm -mm. If I blow an engine in the C70 or my V70, I'm going to get Robert to put that engine in it. Awesome. Do, do random question headed to the Voom meet again this year. Where's the Voom meet? Uh, somebody uh, enlighten me on that. Uh, oh, man, no, that's like this coming weekend. I wanted to. I don't think I'm going to make it. I was stuck here taking care of some things, and I just got behind. Today's Thursday. Tomorrow's Friday. I think the Voom meet is Sunday. There's a slim chance. I know the Zoom meets, I think, Saturday. No, I'm not going to make that. I, I, I wanted to. I'm just not going to make it. So probably next year for sure, not this year. I got a couple things I need to take care of. I got a couple days behind here. All right. Hey, Robert, got a 97 NA with 117. She was my grandma's car. Was a grandma's car maintained perfectly by Volvo. Anything I should be aware of for the future. Car with that low mileage, everything. <laughs> you know, I got like two books of service records with Lemonade. Lemonade had 109,000 miles on it. I don't know if you guys heard what I call service records on these old cars. I call them a brace of toilet paper. You know, this, these things don't mean much unless everything's been replaced. You're talking about a 27-year-old car, 20, 26-year-old, a 25-year-old car. Everything needs to be replaced if it hadn't already. And anything that had not been replaced in four years is getting old. You know, automobile manufacturers, they, they warrant cars for three or four years. That's their way of saying that the parts they put on that car is expected to last three or four years. After that, all bets are off. So if somebody sells me a car that has not been rebuilt in the last three or four years, I need to rebuild everything in that car. So here's an example, like Lemonade. That car brand new was $40,000. Let's say I paid $5,000 for it. And my thinking, I took a $40,000 car, I paid $5,000 for it. I'm probably $35,000 away from that car being perfect. That's just a fact of life. If I took that car to a dealer and to a Volvo body shop, to get everything put back, to make that thing like new, it cost $35,000. And I only paid $5,000 for it. That would put me where it is, you know, new-ish new car for 40 Gs. You know, so I almost don't understand why somebody would pay $3,500 for a car that sold new for $35,000 and expect it to last longer than a week. You know, you get a 25-year-old car with a lot of parts on it that's 25 years old. 
I'm expecting stuff to break every day, you know. You could take the car to the shop. They could put a timing belt, water pump, CV axle on it. You could take the car out of there, drive 200 miles, and the transmission fail. Is it the repair shop's fault? Absolutely, probably not. Unless they left the CV axle out and they dumped all the oil out of that CV axle hole. That transmission, unfortunately, was at that breaking point. You don't know that all the time. That's why I like to monitor my, my cars with, like, the scan gauge, stuff like that. Because I could see stuff going bad before it breaks. You know, instrumentation was put in cars back in the 70s and 80s. So you can monitor those instruments and know when your alternator is about to die. You know, I could see an alternator dying six months out. Take a spare alternator, throw it in the back, hit the road. You know, if it dies on me on the road, I got the tools and the part to fix it. No big deal. You know, I did that with Panther's fuel pump several years ago. Four or five years ago, fuel pump was going out. I grabbed one, threw it in the car. Left Albuquerque, got all the way to Pittsburgh before it finally got to where I couldn't drive the car no more. Pulled in Walmart's parking lot, changed the fuel pump. Took about 28 minutes. No, it didn't take that long. It took 18 minutes to change the fuel pump in my Volvo 850. You know, so, you know, old cars break every day. You know, if you pay, you know, $5,000 for a car that costs 40000 new, just know... You're $35,000 away from that thing being like new. And uh, don't be upset when you find something wrong a week later, you know. This stuff is wearing out, breaking out. And, heck, you know, uh, half of these cars still have all their original wheel bearings on them, you know. So those things are failing every day. Oh, another thing that's failing kind of at a rapid pace, and my buddy Paul in New Jersey tried to warn me about this. I didn't quite understand where he was coming from, but these throttle position sensors are going out. They're not throwing any codes, and they're doing really weird things. Panther was actually bucking while I was driving down the road, just kind of giving me whiplash almost because the throttle position sensor was going out. I thought the fuel pump was going out. I replaced the fuel pump. Helped a little bit, but it, it didn't solve the problem. Got all the way to Oklahoma City. Almost couldn't drive the car. Went by the junkyard, grabbed a throttle position sensor, changed it. Car started driving like brand new. So that's another thing that's failing, not giving codes. Really strange uh, functioning of the car. So be on the lookout for that. A couple people in the last month have had these issues with throttle position sensors. Let me go ahead and read through these comments here and answer all these that I can real quick. And, man, I'm I'm getting tired. It's almost 11 o'clock here uh, past my bedtime because I might have slept three hours last night. I don't know why I couldn't sleep last night. Then I had a horrible dream. Woke me up to go for my walk. I can't even tell people how crazy this dream was. But, uh, hey, I appreciate you guys tuning in. Let's read through a couple of these real quick. But, Caleb, congratulations on getting that uh, NA 850, man. Those things ride incredible. Hopefully, the suspension and stuff's in good shape. Uh, watch the video, uh, new Volvo owner. And there's another video, uh, just got a Volvo. Those two videos are the best two videos to watch. So you type in new Volvo owner Robert DIY on YouTube. And you get to uh, see that video. So watch those, and you should be okay if you pay attention to those. And if you don't have experience fixing things, start off with minor things. Checking your oil, checking your tire pressure, fixing something easy like an antenna, uh, change your oil, and ease into some of this complicated stuff. Man, I have known and spoke to teenagers that replaced the cylinder head on their car. The videos are really good at walking you through that. And maybe, just maybe, I'll clarify a couple of things on the manual swap videos to make those even easier. It's not bad now, but as I learn a little bit more and can record uh, 
little tweaks to the videos. I take the video down, I make edits to it, I republish them so that they're even easier to use. I had a guy send me uh, pictures the other day where they destroyed the fuel lines going to the fuel tank. I don't know who told them to destroy those fuel lines. I didn't because my video shows you how to get those fuel lines off without destroying them. So they need to get fuel lines. When I lost sound, I started talking about features that Volvo's 850s have that other vehicles don't have. Some of this stuff is ingrained in the vehicle and a lot of newer vehicles, they have the features, but they don't work as well. But an example of something that I enjoy that other vehicles don't have is heated seats. Another example is heated mirrors. Another example is uh, cruise control that you can easily engage and control with a touch of a button. Don't have to so much use your pedal and brakes to adjust the speed. They have features that n newer cars are just adapting in the car. You know, one of the things that I enjoyed was my lane assist. You know, they're bragging about new cars having lane assist. Man, I've had that for years. I'm cruising down the highway. I start drifting out of my lane, and I feel this nudge from the passenger seat uh, telling me, get in my lane. That's a co-pilot. So... <laughs> Uh, that's just joking, but these, man, Volvos in the 90s have equipment that people don't even use in today's cars. Fog lights, stuff like that. So uh, these cars are not lacking anything that new cars offer that I feel like anybody needs. Clay Real, you said that you're having issues in the back hatch area of your wagon. That is normally wire harness related issues going through the hinge area. So you'll probably have to access those wires, fix broken wires, or replace that harness back there. I'm having problems with Panthers right now. I open the rear hatch, I hear a couple clicks, the doors lock, uh, alarm goes off, all kinds of stuff related to those wires going through the hinge. Now I fixed Panthers one time, did not tape them up good enough so that, that they wouldn't break, they're breaking again. You need to wrap a lot of tape around there. Volvo had this pretty durable, thick lining sleeve that went on there. Man, you wrap those wires around there 40, 50 times uh, with electrical tape or something like that to stop them from breaking again in the future. Other than that, you're going to be dealing with that stuff every three, four years like I am with Panther. Next question. Somebody's got five Volvos in Phoenix. Man, uh, some of those cars I'm not as efficient with working with. Hopefully they're, you know, easy things to fix and we can fix a few things or all the things in a couple of days and, and I'll be able to move on. If, if it's projects, I'm probably not going to be moving in there and working on projects for several weeks. So hopefully we'll get you running on your primary car, get stuff taken care of on that. And if I got time, uh, help you with some of that other stuff. I might have to rebound back now. If I had it my way, I will be back out in the Southwest December, January, February. Spend winters in the Southern and Southwest regions and the rest of the year, you know, traveling these areas that experience extreme cold weathers. Huh. Somebody said that I should shout out FCP in more of my videos to get some sponsorship, man. I touched on that a little bit. You know, these guys, I don't know, they they get it, they don't get it, you know, they don't care. They got enough business, they don't need no more. Uh, they feel like they got a corner of market. I don't know what it is. I've had them offer to sponsor me before, uh, offer me some brake pads. I Man, I could buy brake pads, you know. I'm, I don't need a sponsorship for that. I love the fact that you guys, uh, they or they offer quality parts and genuine parts. I encourage people to use them. Uh, the more people that buy their good quality parts from FCP, the longer they will support the brand. Now, somebody mentioned that they really appreciate IPD. IPD at one time was developing a lot of things for these Volvos to even make them better. So there's a big shout out to them. I encourage people to support them as well. 
they've gotten into a little bit of, you know, offering budget parts. Uh, man, just force them to do the good parts. Quit buying the budget parts. Tell them when they get the good parts, you'll buy the good parts. You're not buying the cheap crap that breaks while you're putting it on. So, uh, you know, I do encourage people to buy from parts places that support your brand of vehicle. You know, these other places, Rock This, Auto This, you know, they don't support the brand. And you got a delicate machine that likes parts that are quality from the dealer. So, man, uh, do buy from the ones that support the brands. IPD, FCP, uh, there's a Euro tuning parts place. Buy from those, we'll all be better off. Someone mentioned they're disappointed Volvo didn't make an S80 wagon. Can't have it all. But, you know, that V70 wagon was their gift to uh, the community. So, hey, uh, the V70s are great cars. Not an S80, but, you know, they're, they're good wagons. Somebody mentioned hotel costs being 80 bucks. Man, I hadn't stayed in an $80 hotel since COVID started. Once hotels started doing their thing again, they went from 95 to 115. So hotels are more expensive than they were before COVID. And a lot of hotels actually shut down. We probably lost 30% of our hotels. So that makes it a little tougher for those that have to drive around. So should I get an XC90 so I can have never ending video source supply of things to do? Who knows, maybe, but I'm um, not in a hurry to do that. So it won't be this week. It'll be some other time. Uh, somebody mentioned me putting a Canadian cluster in Panther. Man, I don't want to be racking up kilometers versus miles. I'm trying to keep the cluster that's in there going. Hopefully, I'll never have to replace that cluster, and it'll continue counting miles and get that thing up around a million miles or so. So we'll see how that works out. Uh, somebody talked about their warp rotors. If you want to prevent having warp rotors i recommend ceramic pads they don't grip as well as metallic pads when they're cold but once they're warmed up they grip just fine i always use ceramic pads almost never have issues with warp rotors but i need to do the rotors on panther right now another thing somebody mentioned was uh, where's home home is cincinnati ohio uh, that's where my daughter lives that's where i pay rent uh, that's where I go uh, to unwind. I normally don't work on a lot of people's cars in the Cincinnati area or home in general. I like home to be a place where I go to somewhat relax. And, uh, man, if, if we're not friends or I didn't sell you the car, unfortunately, if you're in Cincinnati, probably not going to be working on your car. It's just, uh, man... And I don't want nobody showing up at my door whining about some car repair that they need done and they're pressuring me to do. You know, I just I'd rather keep work away from home. Even when I was doing real estate, I didn't let people know where I lived. I once sold a house to a guy that lived across the street from me. It took him six months to realize I lived across the street, you know, just don't like bringing uh, work home. Uh, home should be a place that's full of rest, peace, safety, not a place for people to show up acting like they're desperate for something, anything. Just don't like doing that. Somebody mentioned having their ETS light on their S70, you know, throttle body issues. People drive around with check engine lights all the time. Not exactly sure why, because you could have several things hiding behind that check engine light and then something else compound that. Now you got four or five issues. You don't know which one you want to fix that will cure what's irritating you. Man, fix your car. I don't drive around with check engine lights on my cars. I fix everything. So when something new pops up, I got one thing to deal with. I don't have to guess which one of these four things are causing my car to, to run rough. You know, So fix your car. Take care of those ETS lights, stuff like that. You know. Ain't trying to sound, you know, mean about it, but hey, uh, get that stuff fixed so when something else happens, you know. But I mean, usually, 
you don't have any issues and your car doesn't run rough if you take care of the other three things that are growing bad on the car. So yeah, I don't know what else to say about that. Uh, somebody asked about manual all-wheel drive transmissions, I think primarily in P80 cars and in these cars now. They did not send any of those to the U.S. So if you want a manual transmission, you need to get that thing from Canada or some other country. Uh, they just didn't import any of those to the U.S. Uh, community. And you got to go out of the country to get one. So they are hard to find in the U.S. Someone asked about IPD and I sway bars. Should they get them new or used? Man, a piece of metal is a piece of metal. I don't know if getting them used or new matters unless it's rusted through. A used one is just as good as a new one. So, man, it may be almost as expensive to get used ones than new ones. It's just I don't see the difference. So if you can find a set used, somebody's willing to sell, buy them used. I have bought entire cars just to get a set of those IPD and I sway bars and piece out the rest of the car. You know, so those things are, I think, worth getting. And if you can find a used set, that's great. Uh, don't really expect any savings on them other than convenience or or save man if you save 25 percent on a set of ipd and i sway bars I, I call that a win you know that's just uh, the way it is should you relabel your s70 850 man don't be posing you know I, a lot of people debadge their cars but i don't know if putting some 850 trim on your s or v70 and then putting that 850 sticker on it but you know at the end of the day this is your ride, man. Have fun with it. Whatever you do to it to make it fun for you, just do that. So you could put, heck, you could put Mazda labels on there if you want. Uh, Corvette labels, Ferrari labels. Heck, we run around with Ferrari mooses on our cars stuck on there. So just make it fun for yourself. That way you enjoy it, and uh, you may keep it a little longer if you're enjoying it. Man, should you reuse subframe bolts? They say you should never reuse stretch to yield hardware. So if the torque value is a number and then there's a angle torque after that, those are stretch to yield bolts. Those bolts stretch, they're subject to break. Uh, the knuckle to strut bolts are stretch to yield. I reuse those all the time. I reuse subframe bolts all the time. However, you can't really torque them right the second time. The third time it gets worse. The fourth time it gets worse. I actually reused some strut the knuckle bolts on Elizabeth's car one time. The last time I put them in, they just didn't feel right. It just felt like, man, they just wouldn't torque. I stopped, let the car go. Two months later... The bolts broke, fell out, and her wheel fell away from the car. Fortunate for her, she's sensitive to the vehicle. She felt and heard one of the bolts break and fall out. She was driving, getting ready to pull into a parking lot. She hears something fall out and tumble under the car. She's like, whoa, what was that? She stops, pulls into a parking lot. The wheel kind of tilts away from the car a little bit got to tow it home you know it's an inconvenience bolts man they're usually not that expensive 10 bucks you know maybe a little more for subframe bolt bolts i've heard of people driving down the road and a bolt break out of their subframe you get two or three of those fall out of there you might be running over your engine cradle that would total your car out i don't know how you explain that to uh insurance company that you was driving down the highway and you ran over your engine you know so i'm gonna say don't do it but i do it all the time you know be careful if you do it it's better to get new stretch to yield bolts i don't reuse uh cylinder head bolts ever uh that's something you can't get at now my daughter she was able to go to the dealer buy a couple of those knuckle bolts put them in, torque them down, and go on about her way. But, hey, uh, I mean, man, that, that could have been bad if she'd have been uh, 
racing, I mean, like getting on the freeway or something, 30, 40 miles an hour, bolts fall out, wheel come off of a car, just sling the car off the road. That could be dangerous. So try not to do things that's dangerous. Blend door motors stuck. I don't think those are serviceable items. There's usually a gear in there that breaks. Most of the time, the blend door motor, about half the time, if it's not working, it's not the motor itself. It's actually something in your control unit, but if you get the right scanner, you can actually see if those things are working and go from there or pull them out and test them. See if you see the little shaft turning back and forth. If not, you have to replace them. Um, just, uh, you know, I don't know, troubleshoot it. I don't think you can service the motors, you have to replace them. Which is better, 850 or XV70? You know, I like the the P2, I call them B cars, a little better, 98 SV70. The ones that don't have the ETMs, man, I think they're a little more comfortable. Actually, I like the 850 more. The 850 has parts on it that are more durable. I think they went to a stylish mode with the S and V70s, and a lot of those stylish things are not as durable as the the true brick things that's on the 850. You know, you got painted bumpers. You scuff those up, they look like crap. 850's got bumpers. You have to scuff them up pretty bad for those to look bad. Door panels fall apart. You know, the only thing, there's only a couple things I like about the V70, S70's a little better. One of them is the dash pad. The dash pad doesn't get that curling around the uh, airbag. And there's a couple other things that I've run across, but man, I haven't filled up one hand yet. So I, I like my 850 better. That's why I'm more prone to buy an 850 than the SRV70. So that's where I'm at. Man, I may take up on re listening to the audio Bible at night because uh, the dream wasn't scary. It was just weird, you know. It's just a dream. I'll, I'll get over it. But, you know, uh, better to sleep with things going on in the background that bring, uh, say, peace and better rest than weird stuff happening in the dream. So, hey, appreciate you guys watching. Hope to get some uh, more wrench turning content up soon. Y'all have a great day. If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.